In this video, I'm gonna show you how to grow all the greens your family needs in a four and a half by four and a half foot area, even in the midst of food shortages. Welcome to Prepared to Live, I'm the Chief. Today we're talking about creating a green system that will allow you continuously produce greens to combat the coming food shortage. You might ask yourself, why greens? Well, a few reasons. They're easy to grow, you can grow lots of them in small spaces, and they're nutritious, and they diversify your diet. So greens are an easy choice, especially if you're just learning to grow things. When you're creating a system Basically what you're doing is you're building a plan. And that's part of what we do here. As a matter of fact, we prepare, which is plan, produce, which is grow or create, and then we protect. Make sure that system is in place and that it can continue to do what it does. When we talk about creating a system, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, what kind of greens do I actually eat? Lettuces, what kind of lettuces? Romaine, butter crunch, oak leaf, what kind of lettuces do I eat? The second question we need to ask ourselves is how many greens do I eat? How much of each one of these things do I eat? So just consider how many salads do I eat every day? And what kind of salads? Do I eat a Caesar salad a week? Do I eat two regular salads a week? And what goes into those salads? Do I like spinach in my salad? Do I like microgreens in my salad? What do I like inside those salads? And beyond that, how many times do I eat greens as a side dish? So one way to determine how much you're actually gonna need is to weigh or measure all of the ingredients when you build those salads this week. When you build those salads, weigh the lettuce that goes in the salad, write it down on a piece of paper. Measure out how much spinach you're sauteing. Measure out how much Swiss chard you're using. Measure out the arugula that you're chopping up separately, maybe to go into your mixed green salad. But weigh those things or measure those things so you can get an actual idea as to how much you're growing. And the purpose of this careful determination is because when we grow too much, it consumes resources. Resources that can be used for other things. So as we begin to determine this, we want to make sure that we get pretty spot on to how much we're growing because extra fertilizer, extra space, or something that we can use for other things besides the greens family. So when we begin to determine this, make sure that you're getting really close and that we're not just throwing a guess out, but we want to create a system that lasts and we want to be able to use this to feed our families when things get tight. Listen, if you like this content, hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you get a notification on every video that we post. So moving on to our, our next part of the system is make sure that you start with quality seeds. Now this is, this is important. I can't stress this portion enough. Make sure you start with quality seeds. I get all my seeds from Haas Tools or Johnny Seeds. I'll include a link below to Haas Tools and that is an affiliate link. The Johnny Seeds is not an affiliate link. So make sure that you, uh, that you at least look at those two places to get seeds. I don't care if you use the affiliate link or not, but just make sure you look there because we've had such good success with seeds from those companies and we've tried lots of companies and those are the two that always rise to the top. Now the second part is choosing the medium in which you grow. We grow all of our greens hydroponically, but that doesn't mean you have to. You can grow them in soil right in the ground. You can grow them in containers. You can grow them in raised beds. Whatever medium you choose is okay. This system is going to work no matter what medium you choose. We just choose to use hydroponics because it's easy and also inside the greenhouse it's protected from the deer, it's protected from the animals. Now that we've determined what kind of greens we eat. We've determined the medium that we're gonna grow in. Now we need to begin to determine how much we need based on the discussion that we had earlier in the video. How many greens do I eat and which of each green do I eat? How many people am I feeding? How many of those things am I going to need per week? We're deciding this on a per week basis. So if I eat one head of lettuce, if I eat one romaine head, if I eat some uh, oak leaf thrown in there with it and maybe saute some spinach on the side, I need to begin to realize how much space I need to grow for each one of those things. So let's begin to look at um, a spacing issue. I'm gonna jump into the studio so I can draw some things out for you and I'll meet you in there in just a minute. 
whew, much cooler in here. If you feel in that same heat that we feel here in Georgia, give us a thumbs up and let us know that you're sharing our pain because it has been a hot summer. Now that we're talking about spacing, the first thing we need to do to get to that system where we begin to actually put things in the ground is to start our seeds. In order to start our seeds, we have to determine what kind of variety of seeds we're going to start. Are we starting head lettuces? Or are we starting loose leaf or cut and come again? Now let me get into those things just a little bit. Head lettuce is something or, or, or just a head green is something that you're going to harvest the entire head. So like a butter crunch, maybe you're going to take the entire head. Uh, but then like an oak leaf lettuce is a cut and come again. That means you're going to cut it just above uh, the headstock and you're going to harvest that as loose leaves and then it's going to come again. You're going to cut it and it's going to come again. If you harvest the whole head, things like cabbage, if you're growing cabbage as a green, um, things like butter crunch, things like romaine, those are, all cut, those are all head varieties. So you're going to harvest the entire head at one time. Then you've got oak leaf, you've got spinach, um, even Swiss chard, um, those kind of things. You're going to cut them and then you're going to get two, maybe three harvests uh, from each one of those plantings. So as we get that in our mind, what different varieties of things we're going to plant, that's going to determine the seed starting structure. Now, my recommendation is to start your system in a 72 tray. A 72 cell tray is a 10 by 20, that's 10 inches by 20 inches, um, 10 inches deep and, tw and 20 inches wide, and it's divided into 72 cells. There's going to be six cells deep, and there's going to be 12 cells wide. So you've got a row of six this way and a row of 12 that way. So you're probably going to need um, at least two of these trays. So when we're talking about space, you're going to need a 20 by 20 space in order to grow or to start your seeds. They're going to be in these cell trays for four weeks. So the first four weeks of their growth, they're going to be in these 72 cell trays. So week one, you're going to start your, your um, lettuce, your, your head lettuce. You're going to start it on one of those rows, six deep. Depending on how many heads of lettuce you're growing will determine how many seeds you plant. Let's just say that you're going to plant two. So we're going to plant five cells. Then we're going to plant five cells of bok choy. Then we're going to plant five cells of, um, of romaine. We're going to plant five cells of Swiss chard, so on and so forth until you get all the varieties planted. Now, if you, if you need more than six varieties, then of course you're just going to require more trays once we get into the development of this. But let's say we have six varieties. So week one, we're taking up the first six by six block in that 72 cell tray. Then on week two, now week one, you're at one week in development now. These are one week old. They've already germinated. Um, they're, they're, they're tiny little plants. They're up and you can see the growth. Then we're going to come back on week two and we're going to plant the next cell. So on week two, I'm planting everything. I mean, on week one, I'm planting everything. On week two, I'm planting everything. Now, when we get to weeks three and four, we're then going to remember whether we're harvesting this as a cut and come again or a head variety of green. So every single week, you're going to start, pick a day and keep the day standard. So every Monday, I'm going to plant all of my head varieties every week in perpetuity from now on so that I'm harvesting every week, so that I have those things to harvest every single week. So my butter crunch, my bok choy, my cabbage, my romaine, I'm planting them every single week. Then when I get to week three, now I've got a full tray. So I've got all 12 rows filled. Now I'm starting a new tray. These are continuing to grow. Re week one is now two weeks old. Week two is now one week old. So in week three, I'm going to plant all of my head lettuces again, all of my head greens again. Now, I'm not going to plant my cut and come again on weeks three or four. And why is that? 
because I'm going to cut them and then it's going to take them two weeks to grow back. So I'm going to cut them and then I'm, go I'm going to cut week three and then I'm going to cut week four. So by the time the next week rolls around, my first harvest has come back in. So I'm planning week one and week two on all of my cut and come again. So I'm taking off week three and week four. And then on week five, I'm going to plant my cut and come agains again with my head greens. So that's the way your system is going to continue to work. Now, as your system develops, you may find that you're getting three cuttings out of your cut and come agains. If you're getting three harvests out of your cut and come agains, then what you're going to do is you're going to plant week one, week two, you're going to take off week three, four, and five because you're going to get a cyclical repeated harvest off of the ones that are staggered a week apart. So you're going to get that harvest back in. So now that you have got those done, let's talk about how much space you're going to need. If you're planting less than six varieties, then you're going to need two trays. So two trays, which is, a, which is gonna be 20 by 20. A 20 by 20 space is what you're going to be looking at um, for those seeds to start. And then once you harvest, or then once you move week one, after four weeks, you're going to move week one over into your grow medium. You're going to put it in your containers. You're going to put it um, into the ground. You're going to put it in your raised beds. You're going to put it wherever you have decided to grow these things. And then you're going to restart your plants, which would be week five now. You're going to start those in those spaces that you just emptied. Now we're just going to continue to repeat this cycle. We're going to continue to keep these cell trays full and planted every single week and moving them out every single week. After week four, you're always going to be transplanting something out and sowing back into that empty spot with, a new, seed, with new seeds, starting new seeds in those empty spots. Now that we have this seed planting system, let's talk about one more thing that requires space. If you're going to introduce microgreens into your system, which we do microgreens, we love microgreens, that's going to take a 10 by 20 tray with no cells, just a plain planting tray uh, or a bottom tray is what a lot of people call it. You're going to fill it with soil about two inches deep, and then you're going to sprinkle those microgreen seeds over the top very thickly and it's going to take 14 days for those to come to um, harvestable size. So that means that this week you're going to plant your microgreens. Next week you're going to plant a new tray of microgreens. And then on week three, when you come back to replant microgreens again, you're going to harvest the ones you planted on week one because they're now 14 days old and they're ready to harvest. You're going to dump that and plant back into that same tray. So that's another 10 by 20. So basically what you're looking for is a 20 by 20 space that will allow you to plant all of these things and that's how much space you're going to need for your seed starting and your microgreen harvest. Now that we know how much space we need in our seed trays, let's jump over to a rough hand-drawn diagram so that we can get things out of those seed trays after that fourth week and into the ground. Now we're going to move those plants out of our 72 cell tray. In order to know how much garden space or container space we need, that's where we're going to bring in days to maturity. When we look at days to maturity, that's going to tell us how long these things are going to be in the ground. Most of our greens are going to be around 50 days or 7 weeks. When we begin to to look at that, that means it's a seven week process from the time we plant the seeds until we harvest. So when we begin to take a look at this and we break this down even further, we're gonna leave them in the containers for four weeks. So that leaves three weeks in the ground. Each square foot or each one and a half feet, I'll explain in just a moment, we can get nine plants. So, one, two, three, four. Now, why is this one and a half and not one square foot? Because we're planting on six inches, so it's going to hang over three inches on each side. So that makes this one square foot one and a half square feet. 
So in order to get our 36 plants, why 36 plants? Because we're planting two of each variety, six different varieties, or 12 per week. So we're going to have 36 of those in the garden at one time. 36 plants, we're going to need a four and a half by four and a half square foot area in order to plant these seeds so that we can have everything in the ground and growing to maturity. That's it. Four and a half by four and a half. Even the smallest balcony, you can do that. So as you can see, it's easy to grow a lot in a small space. When we begin to put the plan together and we see the space we need, even on the smallest deck, you can plant a four and a half by four and a half foot container garden so that you can grow enough greens for you and your family and it's in perpetuity. It will just continue to go and go and go and go and go. There's also other areas to add some variety to these greens. If you're growing six varieties, that's okay because you may already have access to others. When you go to the park or maybe even out in your yard, there's lots of greens that you can eat and forage right there. Lamb's quarter, plantain, chicory are some of those that are just readily available everywhere we look. Dandelions are prolific, especially here in the southeast, and dandelion greens are served in top-end restaurants. So adding those to your salads are a bonus as well. And then if you're already growing a garden, there's some greens that you can add as well. You may not realize that you can eat sweet potato leaves. You can eat the leaves from your broccoli and your cauliflower, bean leaves, even okra leaves can be added to salads or sa sauteed as a side dish. There's lots of ways to enhance this green production system. And if you'll start doing this today, in seven weeks you'll have a fully functioning system that will be giving you greens every single day. Guys, I hope this has helped you. I hope it empowers you to get out and do something. We strive here to help you build a life-proof life, a life that keeps life from happening and bringing you down, but one that just continues to roll on no matter what the situations and the circumstances. Thank you so much for joining. Listen, subscribe, ring that notification bell, give us a thumbs up, and as always, we'll see you on the next video.